since I was a little child, my father was doing the comic strips and holding my hand, and I got pictures of me not, not even being able to stand up yet, and he was holding my hand and, and coloring some of his work or whatever. He actually, um, you know, encouraged me as a very young child to draw and um, get, keep me out of his out of his head, way, he would uh, give me a, a quarter for every strip that I drew him. So I would draw like four or five strips and they were really crude, of course, but um, my father would give me a dollar. So, uh, so he, and, and then as time went on, he would read me the strips, like he'd do a Cheech Wizard strip. And then he'd say, this is what I did with Cheech Wizard the other day, son, and uh, and I believed him, you know, and we started to wait for Cheech, you know, like like some kids have Santa Claus, I had Cheech Wizard as as this imaginary friend. We would wait for him to show up, and what my father was doing was implanting his world into my mind as a child, and uh, so as I progressed in my drawing abilities. I naturally fell into his world. It, 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 they were real, you know. As, as a child, we believe that they're real, you know. I think it's, it, it's the, the, the line, uh, the big, bold, body line the holding line that goes around the outside of the character. There's thin lines on the inside. You might do the whole thing in a thin line and then put that big, bold line around the outside. That's Bodhi. And, um, and it translates well to, to the spray can. And so some of the earliest graffiti artists that did the trains in New York uh, picked up on that and, and ran with it. And, uh, and then People started imitating and not even knowing where the characters came from, that they were imitating each other. So some of the characters got so deformed, you know, in some of the early graffiti pieces that they just look like, like bubblegum versions of our work, you know. But, um, you know, eventually it came around and, you know, people like Dondi had the book in his hand and he was drawing on the trains, you know, like the characters. So, so the characters were more right on, you know, and uh, and it just kept going, you know, and it's it's rippled across the, the planet. It's, it's amazing. My father never got to see it happen, but I got to, you know, and, you know, I think, thank my lucky stars, you know, for, for being, his son. Cheech is like, he's my father's alter ego. My father was inside the hat. My father was one of the sweetest guys you'll ever meet, but Cheech is like kicking in the balls, and he's like, he's, he's you know, he's bad-mouthing and, you know, and, and swearing and, uh, and doing horrible things to other characters. And I never saw you do a trick, Cheech. Go away, fart. Wizards do tricks. You is a wizard, you should do me a trick. Fuck off, frog. Cheech isn't the nicest guy to hang out with, but uh, I was the lizard and he was Cheech. And the one thing, uh, you know, the, the ongoing, uh, the ongoing joke was the kick in the balls. Joe. You got to do a trick right now or I'll lose faith. Okay, shitbag, I'll do my favorite. It's the time distortion trick. 
simple forest turds get out of line? I gotta kick them in the balls, or are they gonna usurp the big hat legend? My father and I used to box when I was a little kid in, on the bed, in the bedroom, and, and, and I would, you know, obviously couldn't take on my father, but, you know, every time things got heated, I'd hit my dad in the balls as, as hard as I could with, with the boxing glove, and he would drop, and I, you know, winner, you know, and like my father, I'm gonna get you, and uh, so, I, after a while, my dad didn't want to box anymore because I kept hitting him in the balls. Um, and then he started, he got revenge by kicking the lizard in the balls and over and over and over again. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's how that happened. Yeah. I remember my dad drawing that piece. Um, it became uh, one of his first comic books uh, that was actually published by, you know, you know, like uh, by, by a publisher that, that, you know, like uh, an underground comic that came out, the Junk Waffle, comic number one. Uh, that was the cover for it, and. Um, it was. It just. It's always been a favorite of mine because uh, I remember him doing it, and uh, I had. Uh, I just have an affinity, you know, and I, uh, in, in fascination with spaceships and and uh, you know and and the the airplanes and the and the military stuff that my father was into. It's uh, you know that's the stuff I'm into. As well, I love to draw that kind of stuff. You know, I would say my favorite thing to draw is the Bodhi broads. You know, because they're just fun with the curves and stuff. But, um, but this piece is is an iconic Vaughn piece, and I I like to keep him alive. Um, you know, um, because <clears throat> well. If you lose somebody that you love, uh, uh, you know they're gone, and the, the 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 characters are are also gone. You know, uh, it's like losing a, a whole bunch of friends <laughs> all at the same time. So I I choose to carry them on. You know, like you can resurrect your your friends after they pass away. You know, I don't know anybody that wouldn't wish to do that. So. That's my motivation um, for doing my father's imagery over and over and over. <laughs> I sent some this up in a dream that I had. Um, my father, I really believe he, he still exists and his energy is around me. Um, but he came to me in a dream once and I, I was using his format and his characters and I, I was working for a magazine at the time. And in the dream, my father was in the, uh, uh, he was in the Grand Central Station, we were, which is his favorite train station. And my father went up to the newsstand, picked up the latest magazine that I was working in, flipped through it, stopped, and he goes, thanks for ripping me off. And I, I got really like, talk very, very straight, like, you know, very, very straight to him. And I said, you know, dad, if you're just one artist and you're gone, and I'm just one artist, and when I'm gone, I'm gone, and I'm done. But when I do you, it's times to you, and times to me. And then he goes, thank you, son. <laughs> and we hugged, and that was, you know, that sums it up, you know. Doesn't get any more real than that. <laughs> 